Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have John Cameron, the author of Rekill, Rewire, and Aristocracy, and Philip Larea, a poet, a financial advisor, and the publisher of Minute Dot. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. The $22 trillion debt, what does that amount to in terms of uh, you know, money that you and I and um, our next door neighbor can actually understand, Philip? Well, uh, the best way to understand it is that it doesn't mean anything at all. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a concept. It's no longer real. Uh, what, what has happened is the entire globe has gone to what they call a fiat currency, which means that it's not backed by any hard asset. It's just whatever people want to invent. So the currency is worth whatever the daily global forex market says it's worth. Uh, when you have uh, the U.S. at 100% of GDP with their debt at $22 trillion, the same with China at 100%, the same in the Eurozone, and Japan at 200% of GDP, what you're really saying is that most of the world is apparently in debt to somebody, but to who? To whom? And the answer to that is um, the, the people themselves and the institutions. Uh, so the bank goes out and buys treasuries, the insurance company does, the average person owns a certain amount of treasuries in their uh, portfolios as part of a balanced portfolio. Uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to what will it buy? So, uh, you know, the, facetiously, they've argued why not just print a trillion dollar coin and put it in the treasury? Uh, the Federal Reserve printed $4 trillion, funded the entire discretionary budget of the U.S. for four years. Uh, they've gone about destroying that money in the last two years. So at the end of the day, what it comes down to is you and I will have a certain amount of money, and what will it buy? I think the wild card, and this is what I think is probably one of the most um, uh, creative, destructive things of the 21st century, will be uh, cryptocurrency. Because you have so much of the market, so much of the economy now having gone underground. We've lost so many W-2 employees, which means we've lost the taxation from them. Uh, people are doing the old-fashioned barter system. If you've gone online and played with Let's Go or Offer Up or anything like that, you have so many people that are just trading goods and services. Cryptocurrency does not have any, uh, the government can't track it. So there's no way to say that uh, the seller needs to collect sales tax or the buyer needs to pay it. And so what I really think would happen, if you ask me what the bottom line of all of this is, is that uh, one of these days we're going to have another Bretton Woods arrangement where the major uh, G20 countries get together and say, okay, um, uh, we just have rules of the road, we're wiping out all the debt, uh, everybody can have 60 percent debt to GDP. Uh, you know, everybody can run 3% deficits every year, and it's just a gentleman's agreement. And as long as the world agrees to it, it's really just a concept. John, any thoughts um, before I weigh in? Well, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Uh, I, I, I agree that, that the $22 trillion, I think you really have to make it real um, to understand how bad things have gotten, um, and and you know if you know your your kind of lifeline, the 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 kind of Bretton Woods future agreement, I don't think is going to happen. I think we're, we're, what we're going to see, unfortunately, is that that's sixty-seven thousand dollars for every man, woman, child, approximately in the United States. If you factor in the unfunded pension liabilities and all the um, all the you know, private debt and the student loan debt and 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 all the rest of that. It's what another hundred trillion something well, like no, that. Well, no, if you yeah. okay, it's sixty five thousand or sixty seven thousand dollars per person for the Just acknowledged the debt. Acknowledged There's another one hundred twenty three trillion yeah. to two hundred trillion, depending on who's doing the counting, yeah. and who's using yeah. making the estimates. That uh, puts it over a million dollars per family that's owed. And if you add in the uh, debt of corporations, a lot of which is junk, triple B rated, yeah. add in uh, uh, college debt, which a lot of a lot of which will never get repaid, add in consumer debt mm. for cars and, and mortgages Credit and so forth, and, yeah. it comes up to over over seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand dollars per person in debt. Now you say nobody will ever pay that, and that's true, except no, it's not true. All debt is repaid. It's either repaid by the borrower, not going to happen uh, in the United States, or it's repaid by the lender, getting stiff. 
And that's, I think, what you're probably talking about, a debt jubilee, uh, a situation where a whole lot of uh, lenders don't get paid back. Well, here's a great example of that that's happening right now. Uh, the Federal Reserve created, uh, imagined, four trillion dollars to purchase treasuries. It had no, it has no business, it doesn't collect yeah. four trillion dollars, it simply imagined yeah. it. The Treasury is yes. real money. Yeah. The, tre uh, the Federal Reserve said, yeah, we'll, we'll buy that. Yeah. And they held it on their balance sheet. It's well, still there. Up the last two years, what they've been doing is destroying about $50 billion a month. And all that's really happening is that as these treasuries come due, two, five, seven year treasuries, they are simply letting them evaporate. And not, and not buying more. They're, not well, rolling them up. And as a result, what would normally happen if you and I bought a treasury bond, we would expect our money back for you know par, what yeah. they call par. But the Federal Reserve and the Treasury are both government. So at the end of the day, you have government that owes yeah. government money, and, and the Federal Reserve says, don't worry about it, giving us this money back. Right, but what's happening, yeah. what's happening is the stock market and the bond market have been propped up for the last nine years almost entirely by the $4 trillion that the Fed threw into the economy. Right. That's what we've had. Normally, uh, under you know monetarist theory, you would say if you pump that much money into the economy, either through asset purchase or through interest rate manipulation, you're going to have inflation. Yeah. Well, we haven't had uh, all that right. much inflation in the consumer sector. All the inflation has gone into assets. 100% of it has gone into assets, either real estate, stocks, or bonds. That's where it's gone. And it's been a, stup a stupendous amount of, of, of inflation. The biggest bull market run we've seen uh, in decades. Take away the take away the honeypot. Take away all of that newly created money, and that inflation, uh, that that asset, those asset values are going to have a hard time finding a floor. Which is why, as soon as the uh, stock market had a hiccup last uh, uh, November and, uh, and December, Ben Bernanke or not Ben Bernanke, his successor, uh, Paulson. Uh, what's his uh, name? Powell. Powell, yeah, Powell, Jerome Powell said, ah, never mind, we're not going to tighten up money. Never mind, we're going to stop uh, in, in a very short time the uh, destruction of, uh, of uh, Federal Reserve uh, balance sheet assets. We're going to put on hold any interest rate increases. Right. What they have done is they have said to Wall Street, okay, we got the message, we're not going to mess with you. That's exactly what happened. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And all of that means, all that means in, in terms of what you know, you and I, is that, yeah, we have been able to, over the last 10 years, exaggerate the difference between the uh, assets held by the top one or two or three percent of the population mm -hmm. and everybody else, because you borrow money at zero percent interest rate, put it in the stock market, make eight, 10, 15 percent, you're getting richer, but you're not borrowing that money unless you're already rich. Right. Those who have get to borrow. Those who don't have money don't get to borrow. Correct. And so all of the money, all of the inflation has gone to the rich may, may in I, terms of asset uh, wealth uh, appreciation. May I, may, I, may I speak? Yeah, you may. Okay. Yeah. So uh, back to what the point you made. Um, I think what we're going to see is some draconian measures, uh, not belt tightening, because heaven forbid you, you whack a, a, a bunch of government programs because there's 22 million people's jobs and fat pensions, depending on it. But what you're going to see is, uh, I, I think they're going to try to illegalize cash so they can track everything. They're going to try to make cryptocurrency illegal. They're going to uh, come down hard on, on the barter and everything. And then there basically is going to be a, a currency collapse, or if we're lucky, the Bretton Woods things you're talking about. That's my theory. Well, who knows? I, I'm not going to try to predict the future. I'm just yeah. saying that the, the current situation is untenable. I think well, we probably you know, agree the on that. I think you made the point though that you know ultimately it comes down to a society, and uh, and so you made the point that whatever the one percent are doing, is has nothing to do with the rest of um, the, the society, uh, and uh, that society has seemed for whatever reasons, whatever kitchen table reasons, uh, not benefited perhaps from a stock market rise for all or, the reasons all. that you correctly uh, point out. Uh, and but at they, the end, at the they, end of the day, have. inflation is only what people is is only what yeah. people make versus what they can what it costs. Well, you do two shows, and that's why there has been no so inflation. And over the last ten years, right. these uh, central bankers have been scratching their heads. And we meant to inflate. Why can't Powell couldn't get uh, couldn't get to two percent this Bernanke last year? Bernanke couldn't do it. Yellen couldn't do it. Uh, no, 
and, and, and there's the reason a reason is because for it. it all went into into asset inflation. Well, and I think that I mean, I just when I look around me, and I you know I talk to a lot of people in their daily lives, what seems to be happening in a much bigger way than um, they they can track is that people are really sort of exchanging and bartering with each other. Uh, there is an underground economy that is much bigger than people think. And uh, it's not there yet, but when you get cryptocurrency that's able to transfer uh, to buy and sell without government tracking, uh, you're just not going to see the inflation because people are saying, yes, I'll pay that much for that car or I'll pay that much for that dresser. And, and so people in, in the, you know, the invisible hand are saying, hey, look, this is what things are worth and this is what I'll pay for them. Yeah, well, that's a wild card, of course. Cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and, and, and precious metals are the wild card yep. on whether or not the, uh, the uh, Ponzi scheme will continue for another Correct. year or two or five or ten. God uh, bless The Ponzi. bipartisan background check of, uh, act of, of 2019. Congress, uh, or the House, was, was taken over by the Democrats. The Democrats immediately passed one of their uh, uh, pet uh, uh, gun control acts, uh, background checks. John, is there going to be, is there any significance to it, either in terms of whether or not it's going to actually uh, pass the Senate and get uh, signed into law by the president, is, or is it just, is it just uh, more theater? Well, I think it's, it's more theater. Uh, I think if the Senate um, changes hands in from, from the, the red crooks to the blue crooks, or what, who's there? Is it red now? Yeah, because they're really exactly the same except for the drama. Um, and, and, you know, it's all about big government and it's all about the deep state and scratching backs and special interests. So pretty much they're the same. But I think, you know, if you, if, if it's not going to uh, achieve its stated end, uh, which the stated end is supposedly to uh, cut down on gun violence, because people who use guns in crimes don't buy them through ordinary channels. Uh, they... You know, even even school shooters and all the rest of that, they'll steal them from their parents who bought it through legal means. Uh, they'll buy on the black market because you know rich kids who who go see shrinks uh, have money. Um, and you know the drug wars will continue because I think what is there like one gun store, one legal gun store in Mexico, and there's you know probably as many guns for every man, woman, and child yeah, in Mexico. I mean, I mean, if, so, you, if you want to end gun violence, you have to look at who is shooting the guns violently, and mm -hmm. that's government. If you look at the 20th century, there were eight and a half million uh, killings uh, in the private sector, in other words, uh, murder, uh, what we consider to be uh, capital murder. Okay? Well, no, that, doesn't that number there were hundreds include of suicide? Millions. Doesn't including suicide, yeah. 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 There were hundreds of millions of uh, deaths due to governments, either democide, you've got uh, the Nazis killing 6 million, the Soviets killing uh, 20, 30 million, the, the Maoist Chinese 50 million. Selling another 50, killing another 50 million, Pol Pot, a small timer, but killed like 20 or 30 percent of his population in Cambodia, uh, and, and then we're forgetting about uh, Uganda and a few other mm -hmm. uh, small timers. Governments killing their own people, democide. That's where the deaths by gun take place. Mm. The other place that they take place is war, World War I, World War II. Huge numbers of people killed. Get government out of the business of uh, handling and monopolizing firearms, and you're going to have a lot safer society. The third area where government is, is making a mess of things is with the drug war. They have made uh, the, uh, the ingestion of medicine or recreational uh, substances something that has to be uh, protected, markets have to be, be protected by, you know, killing your, gang, your, your competitors. That's what's happening with uh, gang warfare uh, south of the border and mm. uh, north of the border. And if you get rid of the drug war, quit, having, quit letting governments kill their own people and stop war, that solves most of the problem with people dying from guns. Passing a bill which says that you uh, can uh, get prosecuted, put, uh, put in jail for 10 years because you uh, lent your uh, shotgun to your, uh, uh, to your cousin, that's not gonna, that doesn't cut it.
That's not going to, that's, well, that I mean, solves so I, nothing. It's, yeah, it's so, symbolic yeah. at best. It, well, and I, the question, and they talk about background checks, but what they never really say is, okay, who's going to be responsible for approving and disapproving? And of course, the answer is government. Yeah. And the Second the, Amendment the, the, was put the, in place the, the, the culprits are the ones who are going to be exactly. uh, judging whether their victims can have guns. That's and there's what's going no on. doubt, and I, you know, again, just talking to people uh, in their private lives, there is no doubt that the Second Amendment was put there for, specifically for a population to protect itself from an oppressive government. The founders envisioned that. They knew they could not have won or fought the Revolutionary War if it just hadn't happened that every citizen, for their own reasons, owned firearms. They could immediately go to war. America had no foundries or anything like that. So there's no illusion anymore about um, why the Second Amend Amendment exists. And when we think about the how we have um, denigrated rights to privileges, uh, literally the right to your life, your liberty, and the pursuit, your mobility, for what you want to do with your life. Uh, those things, not one of those is a right anymore. Every one of them is a permission. And I mean, so, uh, you know, I have no doubt that the concern about guns from government is that people are getting, you know, getting to the point. And we saw it in Montana, we saw it in Oregon, where people came out with guns and said, hey, no, you're not taking our land. One more point. Uh, the the, 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 uh, the anti-gun side constantly says, well, you know, people don't need these uh, assault weapons, they don't need the modern firearms or our, our, our forefathers, they had muskets and rifles, and, 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 uh, but what they don't realize is that the, the founders had the best technology available for war in their hands at the time. And, and they knew, as you know, and as you know, and as you both pointed out, that the, the danger to people, uh, the citizenry, is not other citizenry. It is stupid acts of government and government. And so, um, the the idea that that the police can have basically armored vehicles and um, and uh, assault rifles and tactical armor and gas cannons and all the rest of these things and uh, eyes in the sky and all the rest of this and you want <clears throat> you want citizenry that the founding fathers knew had to have the best weapons available to keep government tyranny off their backs to have a single shot rifle or a a one-shot uh, um, pistol or all the rest of that is, is, is insane because the, the people who were for gun control try to twist the debate and say, you don't need that to protect yourself from your neighbor. You don't need it to go hunting. That's but true, you don't. Founding but you need, you need fathers, it to protect, protect yourself against the government. Absolutely, yeah. and I agree with you, knew that. The danger was government. Yeah, and the whole musket thing. I mean, that's what the Brits had too. Muskets. Yeah. Yeah. Muskets against muskets. Muskets against muskets. Rifles against rifles. In Florida, a county has decided to uh, put together a prostitution sting in a a, a, a massage parlor, and uh, an interesting group of people, uh, including Robert Kraft, the owner of a major league sports team, uh, got stung for uh, being a customer uh, in such. Uh, he was offered a plea deal. Uh, are you familiar with that? I am. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, and he turned it down. Yeah. What was the plea deal? Uh, well, the plea deal was to say, hey, plead guilty and, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, it'll be a substantial fine, but don't worry about it. Uh, and we won't put uh, you Kraft said, no, we're going to trial. And, you know, Kraft, I don't know if people know, he's, you know, 77 years old. Uh, uh, the owner of the See Patriots, I'm no fan. Uh, the owner of Kraft Patriots. Heinz, one of the major food companies. Um, and he's saying, no, let's, let's take this to court. Uh, and the issue uh, is, you know, should prostitution be illegal at all? And uh, Well, that's not what's being, I mean, I agree that's an issue, yeah, but yeah. that's not what's being tried in court. What's no, court? I think what he's really doing, though, is he's saying, okay, you know, do your best. I have all the money in the world. Uh, you know, let's take this thing to trial. Let's see what you did. And uh, there were some real issues of uh, privacy, of, of privacy cam of cameras that maybe shouldn't have been there. Uh, well, and, that's, how they, that's how they got him. Yeah. Secret cameras. And so at the end of the day, what it's going to come down to is a discussion about, you know, did you really just arrest this guy for, you know, hiring someone to, you know, get a massage and whatever? But you know the uh, the interesting thing to me is that the the closest analogy to prostitution is sports. So we think about somebody. We think about you know let's say a woman uh, who you know has talents. 
you know, is beautiful, you know, just knows what she's doing. She's, you know, and can make a living doing it. How is that different than, you know, the, the $10 million baseball player who has this great physical talent uh, to hit a baseball? And so tell me, and I think that's where this kind of, it, it raises the national debate as to why in the world is a, a consensual uh, act of commerce, a uh, buyer and a seller, uh, certainly less dangerous than professional sports, which has a 100% injury rate and their life expectancy is reduced by 10, 12 years. A baseball player, former baseball player lives 10, 12 years longer, less than a well, football even person. worse. Uh, it's about the same, I mean, but the injuries are, yeah. it's 100%. So you can't make the argument that it's more dangerous. So what you really have is and of course, an argument the, that says this woman cannot earn a living. And, and of course, the, the whole, you know, the, you know, they'll fall back on the human trafficking, you know, uh, human slavery, white slavery argument. And of course, <coughs> that wouldn't be an argument if prostitution was legal. Exactly. Uh, and so we say, you know, for instance, <coughs> that uh, in baseball, you know, just in commerce or football, that, hey, you know, the uh, player can only go to the pros after a certain period of time, a certain period of college or, you know, out of high school, something. Uh, and so, you, you know, yeah, yes, we put restrictions on things. We do, don't have eight-year-olds driving cars. Uh, but, you know, reasonable restrictions, well, yeah, people okay. People act like eight-year-olds uh, driving cars, though. But at the end of the day, that's going to be the problem. You've got one of the richest people in the world who's going to be able to fight it. We have a couple of minutes left. I want to talk about the, uh, the uh, Santa Rosa situation, where the uh, city of Santa Rosa, due to somebody, uh, you know, a neighbor complaining, uh, told a, a fellow that he had to take down his tall fence because it was uh, higher than the regulations uh, allowed. So he said, okay, I'll take the fence down. What do you do? He put up, uh, he had naked mannequins, uh, anatomically correct naked mannequins, and he just happened to have them. Uh, and uh, so he, uh, he put As them on the lawn. Does. Picture yeah. reindeer and Santa, big blow up Santa's on your front lawn. Well, they made him lower the fence from six feet to three feet, which made his entire front lawn uh, uh, visible. And what he did, he put up giant naked mannequins uh, engaged in various activities uh, that were anatomically correct and said, well, you know, it's legal. <laughs> so he was basically having fun with them. He, he did. And, and, you know, they tell the story about a similar situation where uh, they wouldn't let a, somebody put something on their front lawn that was perfectly reasonable. And so the guy put up this massive wooden uh, middle finger uh, and said, OK, you know, if I can't do something that, you know, makes sense with my own property, I evidently it's not mine. You haven't said I couldn't do this. And so he put up, you know, whatever it was, a 20 foot giant wooden middle, middle finger where it sits because it's not illegal. And we salute that. We salute it. But with not, the middle not, finger. <laughs> not, with the, not with the middle finger, ladies and gentlemen. We, we don't want to desecrate the sanctity of Libertarian Counterpoint by doing that. That's the show for this week. See you again next week, same time, same place on the Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you very much for being part of the show on www.accesssacramento.org, on your uh, internet, on uh, TV, Channel 17, Sacramento, cables all over the place, and of course, YouTube. Thank you. Well, thank you, Richard. It was a quite enjoyable show, what I heard of it anyway. <laughs>